What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for thelines.com, playpicks.com. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Rookie of the Year in Major League Baseball. While you're here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We are going to be cranking out content nonstop between now and the start of sports here in July. So go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up as well, and then let us know in the comments what you think of how the Rookie of the Year might play out over in the NL and the AL. But we're going to give you three picks that we have already put into our accounts for uh, the upcoming season here. Again, as we sit right now, we're going to play baseball in July. Things can change. We know everything is a fluid situation right now, but hopefully we are there in July, as we see right here on the lines. Got an article up if you want to go read it about the changes, you know, that are going to be taking place in Major League Baseball. So be sure and, and take a look at that because we're talking about, you know, the different little, the, the different things that could, could go on that might, you know, play a factor in how you take a look and how you want to bet uh, the season moving forward. So be sure and take a look at that article over there. But over at BetMGM, they have posted the rookie of the year odds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a couple of these. Now, with the 60 game season, guys, I'm not going for any of the very, very low odd guys here, the favorites. Not going to happen for me. 60 games in baseball, anything can happen. I'm going to embrace the variance. I'm going to try and think that something crazy could happen here. And I want to get out in front of some of these markets before they move, before they get into camp and a ton of news really starts coming out. I want to make sure that I'm ahead of some of these market moves. And so that's what we're going to do with these three picks that are in our account for right now. I want to get them in here early and then we can adjust as we get a little bit further down the line and some news starts coming out of camps here. But look, Gavin Lux, get it. Uh, Varsho, Keller, uh, I get it, right? I mean, Varsho's going to start. Keller's going to be in the rotation. I get all that. I understand why they're where they're at here over on the National League side of things. For me, first bet I'm going to make and is in the account right now, Carter Keboom coming in at 9-1, to one, plus 900 here. If you look at Carter Keboom, this is a guy that has just absolutely crushed the ball at all levels. He's hit for average. He's hit for power. He finds gaps as well, as you can see. Lots of doubles here, a couple of triples as well. 2019 in AAA, went for 16 bombs and 79 ribs right there. And you can see pretty good plate discipline as well, walking 68 times to striking out. 100. So a guy that I really, really do uh, like going into the season anyway. And then with the news now that Ryan Zimmerman is going to sit out the season, right? So Ryan Zimmerman's going to sit out this upcoming season. He's got younger kids. Apparently his wife is also uh, in the zone where she might be one of the high risk people when it comes to COVID. So he's not going to play. So Carter Keboom was likely going to get a lot of at bats anyway. He now should get every day at bats. I mean, here's a here's a situation as well where the National League is going to have a DH this season. So with that, Keboom, when he's not playing in the field, should at the very least DH as well. And so at nine to one uh, against in a with a pretty good lineup still around him. If you remember, I mean, there's still the returning, the defending World Series champs here in the Nationals. Keboom going to slot right in the middle of that lineup with some nice people around him that can not only knock him in, but he can knock in as well. Like getting him in the account here at nine to one. Second guy is uh, that we're going to put in our account as well. Also a National League player. Look, May is going to get a bunch of starts there for the Dodgers as well. Carlson likely going to start in the outfielder for the Cardinals. That's not the case. We are going to go way way, way down the list here and take a flyer on someone. Now, you don't have to bet a lot here because it's going to come in at, at good payouts. We're going to go with Alec Bohm here at 40 to 1. If you don't know who Alec Bohm is, one of the really, really good prospects in the Philadelphia Philly organization, a uh, guy that has just absolutely smashed the ball. We take a look right here at his statistics. So let's take a look at 2019 across all three leagues right here. Uh, all three teams that he played for, you can see he hit 305 collectively. But go down here, single A ball, he hit 367. High A, he hit 329. Hit 269 up in double A, but that was with a lot of power as well. 14 bombs, 42 ribs right here. Again, another guy that's finding the gaps. You got some doubles, a couple of triples mixed in here as well. Bohm just uh, finished off that year by heading to the Arizona Fall League and hitting 361 in the Arizona Fall League as well. So a guy that has just absolutely smashed. You can see just since he's been a pro, absolutely crushed the ball um, since he's been here. Now, if you look at this Philadelphia Phillies depth chart, 
There is a chance Baum doesn't make the team, guys. I mean, look, he is on that initial player pool, so he'll be at least on the taxi squad no matter what. But it seems to make a lot of sense to have him on the team, actually playing in the big league squad here for the Phillies. Because when you take a look, he can play first or third. Of course, you've got Hoskins there. Gene Segura, all right. You know, I mean, a guy that certainly he could take some of bats away from. But remember, again, the DH is happening in the National League this year. Jay Bruce is scheduled, is slotted right now to be the DH for the Phillies. You can see they have Bohm listed as kind of second in line right there. Jay Bruce, guys, over the last few seasons of his career, Jay Bruce, we're talking about a 220-ish hitter, right? I mean, if you take a look in 2019 between two different teams, he hit 212 for Seattle, he hit 221 when he came up here, 223 the year before for the Mets, 219 for the Mets again, uh, you know, a couple of seasons here in that 250-ish range. For the last three teams he's played for, been in that low 200s, right? A big, steep decline for this guy. Not only that, look at this OBP. You're talking about a guy here, 310, 283, 235, never did get on base at a very high clip anyway, right? No matter what team he played for, was kind of always that type of guy. That's not the case with Baum, as we mentioned. A guy that has not only that, but walks as well. Look at these OBPs that, you got, that you're seeing right here from him. A guy that gets on base as well. If he makes the big league squad, I could see him taking some at-bats and then fully moving into that DH role. If you see right here, this is from the Philadelphia Inquirer. This is from their beat writer over there. And he, this is from the, the GM there that just says... The fact that Bohm is on the roster is also reflective of the hope that he is able to contribute for us this year. This is the writer's opinion, but provided they're healthy, Howard and Bohm should both be in the big leagues to start the season. So again, we're kind of like reading some tea leaves here with things. We're also making some educated guesses. Could be wrong, but at 40 to 1 on the return, if they already get into camp and word comes out that Bohm is still crushing the ball, if word comes out that Bohm might be the everyday DH as opposed to Bruce or something like that, if that were to be the case, you're not going to get 40 to 1 on him anymore. It's not going to happen. So that's why we're kind of getting in this getting this in our account early. If we want to pile on a little bit later, we can. But uh, at 40 to 1 on Bohm, a guy who I think has a decent chance to make the team and probably take some bats away from some guys here and get, and get into that lineup every single day, I'll take him at 40 to one. Finally, the third rookie rookie of the year bet that we have in our account, we're going to go over to the American league guys, Luis Robert. Yes. Going to start every day for the white Sox is an amazing talent for sure. Still only four to one, not my type of bet that I'm going to get in my account. Here are some pitchers and, you know, hint the guy that is spoiler alert, if you will, the guy I'm going with is a pitcher, but here's some pitchers in front of my guy. Jesus Azardo, Kopech. We got McKay. We got Casey Mize. We've got A.J. Puck, Forrest Whitley. Forrest Whitley is ahead of my pick here of Nate Peterson, uh, Nate Pearson at 25 to 1. Forrest Whitley, good luck even breaking into that rotation there for the Astros. So how he is ahead of Pearson, I have no idea. Um, Puck is likely going to be there for, for the A's and is probably going to get a, a bunch of starts there. So, I mean, look, there are some really good pitchers here along the way. But Pearson at 25 to 1, really just because of the value here at 25 to 1, really catches my eye. And if you guys don't know about Nate Pearson, this guy throws 100 mile an hour fastballs, wipeout slider in the very short amount of spring training they had before COVID hit was absolutely making pro hitters look silly. The guy was absolutely dominating. If you look at his statistics in 2019, guys, it's absolutely crazy when you take a look at this, right? Look at these whips right here. 2019, this is high A a 0.6 whip. They move him up to double A, a 0.9 whip. He goes ahead and goes to triple A, gets a 0.8 whip up in triple A. Again, three digit stuff, wipeout slider, massive, massive upside for this guy right here. Then you take a look over here at this Blue Jays depth chart. Yeah, Ryu's going to be there and Roark's going to be there. But after that, are you trying to tell me that he can't find his way into one of these spot, spots with Matt Shoemaker and Chase Anderson who can't even break a window with a baseball and Trent, Trent Thornton? I mean, come on. I think it's there for the taking here. Now, this is a guy that most likely if we'd have been playing 162 games, we'd be talking about him getting called up about now 
anyway, right? I mean, because he would have been in AAA and then they would be calling him up. Well, in this shortened season, they don't have to worry about his innings load. He didn't throw, uh, you know, they were trying to say like, okay, we don't want to get him too too much over 110, 120 innings, uh, 120 innings, something like that this season. He couldn't get there if he tried this year with the way that things are going to break down. So if he can kind of slot in here at this third or fourth starter for this Blue Jays team, we're talking about a guy if he makes 14, 15 starts, could he win nine or 10 games? Could he come with about a three ERA for you? Could he have a ton of strikeouts and, and you know, really impress? You're talking about the Blue Jays here and remember how things are going to work out. With the way that uh, w- with the way that the scheduling is going to work over here in the AL East, he's going to get a bunch of starts against the Orioles, but he also gets the NL East. He's going to get some start against the Marlins as well, right? I mean, he's going to get two of the very bottom feeders in all of baseball, and uh, you know, I really do like his chances as well. And again, what I really do like is the odds on this guy at 25 to one. He comes into camp, picks up where he left off in spring training. They give him one of those roles in the starting lineup, in the starting rotation. And with that, um, at 25 to one, we're going to love that. Again, another guy here at 25 to one that I feel like if word starts to come out, if you let this get into training camp and they say, this guy's definitely going to get a roster spot, this guy's definitely going to get into the rotation, you're not going to be able to get 25 to 1 anymore because, again, look at these other pitchers that we know are going to get roster spots, right? Lazardo's 5 to 1. Kopech is 6 to 1. McKay is 7 to 1. Mize at 10 to 1. You're not going to get 25 to 1 anymore on him if they guarantee him a rotation spot. So, again, while we're tr- that's why we're trying to get out in front of some of the news here. Again, it's a little bit of reading the tea leaves. It's a little bit maybe even of wishful thinking. But I want to be out in front of it, get the best odds, and then I can adjust accordingly if something doesn't go exactly the way that we have it. And again, with these odds, we're getting the payouts on with Pearson, with Bohm. You don't even have to make big investments into that either. I do, and I do though, really do like uh, Key Boom at nine to one, and I'll probably have a pretty decent investment into him. Uh, with these other guys, certainly a ton of talent here, uh, especially Lux and Varsho. But listen, you know, you struggle with the first two weeks. So we're only talking about 60 games here, guys. You, they struggle the first two or three weeks in the season. It's going to be tough for them to make it up. Key Boom starts out on fire. He could run away with that competition as well. So Key Boom at 9-1 to one in our account. Boom, the long shot here at 40-1 to one in our account. And then over on the American League side, coming with Pearson at 25-1 to one over here as well. Guys, If you appreciate what's going on here, everything's free. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're going to have tons and tons of content over at the lines, over at play picks, all of everything we're doing. So be sure to check out this article. If you didn't quite keep up with all the rule changes that are going to be happening as well. So do that before you start making some bets as well. Maybe that affects how you look at this upcoming season. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back with a ton of content through all of the sports.